A couple of years ago, I decided to write about procrastination. My behavior has always perplexed the non-procrastinators around me, and I wanted to explain to the non-procrastinators of the world what goes on in the heads of procrastinators and why we are the way we are. Now, I had a hypothesis that the brains of procrastinators were actually different than the brains of other people. And to test this, I found an MRI lab that actually let me scan both my brain and the brain of a proven non-procrastinator. And I, so I could compare them, and I actually brought them here to show you today. And I want you to take a look carefully to see if you can notice a difference. And I know that if you're not a trained brain expert, it's not that obvious, but just take a look, okay? So here's the brain of a non-procrastinator. <laughs> Now, here's my brain. <laughs> There is a difference. Both brains have a rational decision maker in them, but the procrastinator's brain also has an instant gratification monkey. Now, what does this mean for the procrastinator? Well, it means everything's fine until this happens. <laughs> so the rational decision maker will make the rational decision to do something productive, but the monkey doesn't like that plan. So he actually takes the wheel and he says. Actually, let's read the entire Wikipedia page of the Nancy Kerrigan Tanya Harding scandal because I just remember that that happened. <laughs> then, then we're going to go over to the fridge. We're going to see if there's anything new in there since 10 minutes ago. <laughs> After that, we're going to go on a YouTube spiral that starts with videos of Richard Feynman talking about magnets and ends much, much later with us watching interviews with Justin Bieber's mom. All of that's going to take a while, so we're not going to really have room on the schedule for any work today. Sorry. <laughs> Now, what is going on here? The instant gratification monkey does not seem like a guy you want behind the wheel. He lives entirely in the present moment. He has no memory of the past, no knowledge of the future, and he only cares about two things: easy and fun. Now, in the animal world, that works fine. If you're a dog and you spend your whole life doing nothing other than easy and fun things, you're a huge success. <laughs> and to the monkey, humans are just another animal species. He has to keep well slept, well fed, and propagating into the next generation, which in tribal times might have worked okay. But if you haven't noticed, now we're not in tribal times. We're in an advanced civilization, and the monkey does not know what that is. Which is why we have another guy in our brain, the rational decision maker. Who gives us the ability to do things no other animal can do? We can visualize the future. We can see the big picture. We can make long-term plans. And he wants to take all of that into account. And he wants to just have us do whatever makes sense to be doing right now. Now, sometimes it makes sense to be doing things that are easy and fun, like when you're having dinner or going to bed or enjoying well-earned leisure time. That's why there's an overlap. Sometimes they agree. But other times, it makes much more sense to be doing things that are harder and less pleasant for the sake of the big picture, and that's when we have a conflict. And for the procrastinator, that conflict tends to end a certain way every time, leaving him spending a lot of time in this orange zone, an easy and fun place that's entirely out of the make sense circle. I call it the dark playground. The dark playground is a place that all of you procrastinators out there know very well. It's where leisure activities happen at times when leisure activities are not supposed to be happening. The fun you have in the dark playground isn't actually fun because it's completely unearned, and the air is filled with guilt, dread, anxiety, self-hatred, all those good procrastinator feelings. And the question is: In this situation, with the monkey behind the wheel, how does the procrastinator ever get himself over here to this blue zone, a less pleasant place, but where really important things happen? Well, it turns out. That the procrastinator has a guardian angel, someone who's always looking down on him and watching over him in his darkest moments. Someone called the panic monster. <laughs> so the panic monster starts losing his mind, and a few seconds later, the whole system's in mayhem. And the monkey, who remember, he's terrified of the panic monster. Boom! He's up the tree, and finally, finally, the rational decision maker can take the wheel, and I can start working on the talk. And this entire situation with the three characters, this is the procrastinator's system. It's not pretty, but in the end, it works. Now I want to show you one last thing. I call this a life calendar. That's one box for every week of a 90-year life. That's not that many boxes, especially since we've already used a bunch of those. 
So I think we need to all take a long, hard look at that calendar, and we need to think about what we're really procrastinating on, because everyone is procrastinating on something in life. We need to stay aware of the instant gratification monkey. That's a job for all of us, and because there's not that many boxes on there, it's a job that should probably start today. Well, maybe not today, but <laughs> you know, sometime soon. Thank you. <laughs>